President Buhari, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Earlier this year, you became the leader of a country facing a huge drop in the price of its biggest export, oil, with corruption out of control and with Boko Haram still massacring hundreds of Nigerians month after month. Is it fair to say that your country is in a state of crisis? Yes, yeah, certainly we uh, have been going through crisis, which um, we properly articulated during our campaigns and uh, we identified uh, security, problem of economy, unemployment and corruption, as you mentioned. But uh, uh, since we were sworn in, I believe uh, uh, positive action has been taken and the results are very clear to us here and to those who are uh, keenly observing our development. We have been able to reorganize the military. Uh, they have retrained. They are in the process of re-equipping. And uh, they are certainly taking, gaining grounds against Boko Haram. Let's talk about Boko Haram, whose brutal campaign of violence has led to more than 20,000 deaths since 2009, more than a million and a half Nigerians displaced from their homes in the north of the country. You've told your army chiefs, I believe, that you expect Boko Haram to be defeated by the end of this year, by December. Surely that's completely unachievable. That's a fantasy deadline. Yeah, well, you are entitled to your own opinion. Um, when I gave the service chiefs a target of end of December, uh, it's because I'm physically on the ground. And uh, maybe you would like to recall that uh, we have got a Lake Chad Basin Commission comprising Cameroons, Chad, Niger, Nigeria, and Benin. And uh, it's known that Nigeria is the main battleground. And we have agreed among ourselves to, de to dedicate a number of troops in certain places uh, by the end of last two months, so that with the coming of the dry season by the end of there, um, there will be a spontaneous move against Boko Haram in their area of, of, of operation in the sub-region. But you say you want them defeated by December. They spent the past week blowing up targets in Nigeria, in Cameroon, in Chad. More than a thousand people have been killed by Boko Haram since you were elected president in March of this year. Things don't seem to be getting any better. Nigerians don't seem to be any safer. On the ground, physically, things are getting better. I have just mentioned that uh, after the reorganization, we put new service chiefs. Uh, troops that were in the front were put back, retrained, re-equipped, and sent back again. And uh, if you uh, are observing clearly uh, the area of operation, uh, the two states, mainly Borno and Yobe, um, the Boko Haram is mainly reduced now to using IEDs, improvised explosive devices, in. Uh, Mr. President, a thousand people dead since you were elected president. That doesn't sound like Nigerians are safer from Boko Haram. Yes, well, uh, at least we are being honest about it. Whenever there is an attack, there are casualties. We mentioned it. We don't hide anything from anybody. But uh, definitely in terms of uh, occupying ground, uh, we are gaining ground. And Boko Haram is virtually now confined to some visa forest. And with NATO operations, well coordinated, um, they are really fully disorganized. And as soon as the rainy season uh, comes, which is by the end of the year, coinciding by what promise we made, Boko Haram will virtually be out uh, of their main stronghold. And that will be the end of it. But what we cannot guarantee, really, is a question of uh, using IEDs, improvised explosive devices, in uh, public places. That, that, that uh, operation by Boko Haram may continue beyond the targets that we gave. But articulated attack by Boko Haram on townships, on uh, military installations, will certainly stop. And if you don't meet your December deadline, what will you do? Will you apologize? Will you resign? What's the repercussions if you don't meet your deadline? Well, one thing you will certainly remember, I will not resign. I will be determined to stay and fight it out. Okay.
And it's been 18 months uh, now since more than 200 Chibok schoolgirls were taken captive by Boko Haram. Uh, they've still not yet been found. When you were running for president, you said to Al Jazeera that the then government knew where they were and you attacked your predecessor for not giving a, quote, cohesive reason as to why he couldn't rescue the girls. Now you're in charge of the government, so why haven't you been able to find them yet? We have an idea where the girls are. Our main problem is, and what we promised to the constituencies where this, these girls were been abducted to, that uh, we wanted to rescue them alive. There are Boko Haram leadership that wanted us to discuss, but uh, we have to prove they are bona fide. We want to make sure they have to prove us, to us that uh, they are alive, they are well, and then we can promise them and negotiate with them. So you will uh, negotiate with them? You would do a deal with Boko Haram, offer them money or a prisoner exchange? You're willing to do that to get the girls back? Yeah, we said it and we meant it. If, if we will be, if we are satisfied uh, that the, uh, the girls are alive. What will you offer if they're alive? What will you offer, money or prisoners? Well, it depends on the negotiation with the leadership of Boko Haram. OK. The Nigerian military hasn't just failed to defeat Boko Haram. It's also carried out massive human rights abuses in the process. The US State Department, the European Parliament, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, they've all documented uh, extrajudicial killings, torture, arbitrary arrests, burning down of homes, plenty of abuses by the Nigerian military. What are you doing as president and as a former general to stop all of that from happening? We promise to investigate and punish all those that are responsible. You say you're going to investigate and prosecute. Uh, Amnesty International this week opened an office inside of Nigeria. But have you done what Amnesty has recommended? They've given you the names of several senior uh, military officers who should be investigated for war crimes. You've sacked a couple of them, but have you actually investigated them? Are you going to prosecute those nine named individuals that Amnesty International has given you? I haven't received that report personally, but the reorganization of the military is part of the compliance with the observation raised by Amnesty International. If I get those documents, uh, the way you seem to be so confident to have uh, received them. Well, they're available publicly online. They were published a month after you took office. Uh, your spokesman has acknowledged that he's read the report. The names are out there, and you haven't investigated or prosecuted anyone as far as we know. Are you going to prosecute the officers who are accused of committing war crimes? It's very difficult for me uh, to start prosecuting people on the newspaper uh, publication. I made the undertaking that if I get that report, I will take action. Uh, the person you said, you said my spokesperson said, uh, I have seen the report. I don't uh, uh, think any of my spokesperson, the bona fide spokesperson, my spokesperson has given me that report and uh, I just put it uh, in the waste paper basket or somewhere. But Mr. President, this is not a new report. This has been going on for years. John Kerry, the US Secretary of State, talked about human rights violations from the Nigerian military in 2013. Human Rights Watch uh, documented the burning of homes, torture in 2014. This is not a new allegation. What, what I want, I want us to go beyond the talking. All you are telling me that uh, the United States Secretary of State have talked about it, Amnesty International have written, and I have told you that I haven't received this authentic document you are referring to. When I get that document, I read it, I assure you, if there are some, those that I, uh, are guilty, they will be identified and they will be punished according to Nigerian laws. Okay, well, the human rights groups have put the evidence out there for several years now. Can I just clarify with you? Boko Haram claim to support what they call Sharia law. They've stoned women to death. They've cut the hands off of thieves. Uh, do you yourself, I know you're a Muslim from northern Nigeria, do you support the imposition of these types of punishments across Nigeria? Because there is a quote from you uh, from 2001 in which you allegedly say, God willing, we will not stop the agitation for the total implementation of the Sharia in the country. Country. Is that still your view, Mr. President? Nigerians, by their constitution, have the right to 
pursue any religion they want to. But there is a f fundamental issue here. No religion advocates hurting the innocent. Boko Haram are finding it difficult to get volunteers voluntarily now because we can't go and slaughter children in their sleep, kill people in the churches, kill people in mosques, in motor parks. Mr. President, we all agree on that. I'm asking you about Akbar. punishment. Uh, will you allow me to finish, please. please? They can't kill people, innocent people, and shout Allahu Akbar. They either don't believe God is great or they don't know what they are talking about. This clearly, uh, Nigerians in the constituencies where Boko Haram uh, are executing people, cutting hands, uh, stoning them, as you mentioned, have understood that. Boko Haram is anything but Islamic. This is very clear. We said it, we put it in writing, we mentioned it. You are very clear on that, and I think we all agree that Boko Haram are not the godly people they claim to be. I'm asking you about the punishments. Do you support the use of stoning for adultery or cutting off of hands as part of Nigerian law across Nigeria, as some say you support? No, Nigerian law does not allow for that. And you don't want to change the law to allow stoning or any of these more brutal punishments to be brought in? I cannot change it. I haven't been voted, I haven't been voted by majority of Nigerians to change the Nigerian constitution. Just before we finish, uh, one last question. You ran for election on a campaign of change. You were the change candidate. Many people would say you're a 72-year-old ex-general. Uh, you were a military ruler, a military dictator in the 1980s. How are you the change that Nigerians want, that young Nigerians are so keen for? And can you guarantee that you won't become a dictator again? Under this system, I cannot be a dictator. I have just told you uh, the system we are following now. The people I wanted to be in my cabinet, I have to send them to the Senate. And it's up to the Senate to find them suitable or unsuitable to be in the Nigerian cabinet. Whatever the Senate brought b back by the constitution of our country, I have to act on it. Do you regret your rule in the 80s? You were accused of human rights abuses, of being a military dictator, of clamping down on the press. Do you regret that period of your life? Now you're a Democrat? If there is any injustice that can be proved against me when I was there, I will gladly apologize. But uh, trying to stop corruption and indiscipline is not an injustice. And in fact, my coming back now under a different system is because of my performance in the last time where I was being accused of dictatorship. Because people have seen discipline, they have seen accountability, they have seen order, and therefore they wanted it back. That's why uh, the majority of Nigerians now voted me back under a different system. Mr. President, I believe we've run out of time. You have to go. Thank you so much for joining me on Upfront. Very kind of you. Thank you.